Fortnite is undoubtedly the hottest game right now. It's gotten plenty of hype and buzz around it, and it's generally a really fun game. Fortnite However, is, is it already gearing Fortnite. up to hit a- It goes without saying, Fortnite's pretty big, but that doesn't stop people with too much time on their hands from asking how long it'll last. With PUBG having a decline in players, some are wondering if Fortnite will take the same fate. Right now on YouTube, there's a few popular videos making predictions like this. Finally, apparently, in the entire few months, Fortnite's been a thing. Dude, just say something. This isn't to say they don't make good points, in fact, some of them I do agree with. But, you know what? These videos don't provide enough info. They're just way too moany and biased. You want some real Fortnite death content? You got it. We'll start off with everyone's best friends. Thing 1 and Thing 2. These guys have got games with Battle Royale releasing soon. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> if they're doing it, then man, as, as the genre's shown where it stands in the industry. But because of this, some people are already trying to dig Fortnite a grave, despite these games having two significant obvious flaws. The age rating and the cost. Fortnite has the benefit of being free. If it wasn't free, it would be gone! I'd be playing something else! And is expected to stay that way forever. Something which his competitors will probably never do. You know, Smithers, I think I'll have my next game be free to play for our players. When pigs fly. Will you be making the game free now, sir? No, I'd still prefer not. No responsible parent out there is going to let their little eight-year-old Timmy buy a $60 mature rated game, especially if he's already got Fortnite and also squeeze thousands of V-Bucks out of his parents' credit card every season. Now, I do think these new games may cause a shift in the Fortnite community, but not enough to kill it. If that were the case, PUBG would have zero players right now. And for those, by the way, thinking PUBG's dead, just because a game's players aren't at its peak anymore doesn't mean a game's dead. Now, take this for example. This. This sh is dead. And god, can I just say that it's insane that massive companies have got to the position where instead of releasing unique new content, they're ditching what made them great solely to focus on something else that's popular. Did anyone even ask for more Battle Royale? I mean, I'll still play it, but no single player? Target audience plays a big role in these games, and these new ones, for all we know, might not fit the same criteria that Fortnite has. I think when these new games are released, we're going to see if the gaming community truly enjoys Battle Royale, or else these corporate big boys are going to be in some serious trouble. Royale! <laughs> That's a huge mistake. So since Fortnite has launched, um, which hasn't been a long time, they've released over 50 emotes, and some of them are already looking very similar to one another. If emotes continue to increase at this rate, it will be more difficult to differentiate between them, which will result in less people showing interest in new content and teasers not having the same impact. My point isn't just about emotes specifically, but the content within Fortnite as a whole. People are content with the content they're currently getting, but please, emotes and skins are going to eventually wear off surely, and the current players are going to expect more. And yes, I hear some of your calls. Trolls us, if people don't want skins, they don't have to spend the money. They can just play the game for free. Thank you, every Captain Obvious out there. Everyone knows that. But the current reward model for the game seems slightly over-focused on mainly cosmetic rewards, like just XP boosts, outfits, gliders. There's not much other progression. Yeah, sure, you can rank your overall level and battle pass, but what's your reward? Another bling bag. Ooh. Even though Epic Games have added new game modes, the progression system still doesn't provide much. Then again, does it really really need a complex progression system. It's hard to say. Comment what you think. And you know what? I've had enough of being bullied for being called a default skin. It's essentially the noob of 2018. Just because I don't want to pay for cosmetics anymore doesn't mean you can rub it in my face, goddammit. And honestly, the level of defaults has increased massively. We're now seeing default skin noobs everywhere. Having the wings on and everything, it's like, it makes me feel like they're leader, like they're the guardian of defaults. <laughs> By the way, don't get me wrong, real default skins still exist. I ran into one of them in their purest form yesterday. It's a, it's it's a, it's a, a true, it's, it's a true tanks. default. My god, it sounds like this guy wants to raise an army against these poor default skins. But then again, we've, we've seen <clears throat> trolling noobs since the early COD days, so take that as you will. Every day a new set to collect. How exciting! And for only FLAPPING FLOTTOM WHAT'S THAT?! 
whether this game is free to play or not, there should still be limits. When players or their parents realise how much they're spending on a game that is supposedly free, they're gonna stop spending the money. This isn't just a Fortnite problem though, because I swear every game has this problem somehow. Challenges is a challenge in itself, and the Fortnite Battle Pass is a lot fairer than the current strategies we see, as it gives every player who buys it the opportunity to obtain the items, unlike the beloved loot boxes. And Epic are doing a good job at keeping things fresh and relevant at the moment, especially with things like the Thanos game modes, the new edit style option for skins, and this new creative gameplay mode that's just been announced. <coughs> Trends. Everyone loves them. Being labelled as a trend can be a good or a bad thing, and Fortnite's no different when it comes to trending than the good old fidget spinner. Trends come and go, and the attention span of the news, media, and the community can change in the blink of an eye. You've probably noticed how the media always finds ways to make the latest trends seem negative, like claiming gaming causes addiction, which I discussed in my last video, and I recommend you give it a watch if you want to learn more about real gaming disorder. The current Fortnite kids are addicted rhetoric is the same garbage that's been repeated since I was a kid, and will slowly fade away until the next biggest game comes out. Uh, Marina, okay. um, you don't even let them have games at all. I have so far managed to resist. How old are they? They are six and eight. Yeah. Oh, um, brother, this guy stinks! You all know I can't talk about the media without mentioning celebrities and YouTubers. They hop onto trends every year, we're almost at competition with each other. Oh my god, how crazy is it that this one famous person is playing a popular game? I never expected him to be a gamer too because of his fame status. <clears throat> god, that's, that sounded really bad. That, that was only an impression of someone who'd say that, I promise. In fact, I love the fact celebrities stream and visit gaming events. The more people who enjoy games, the better. Let's face it, we know why most YouTubers and celebrities are playing Fortnite, and that's probably for more mainstream relevancy. But these appearances are what helps fuel the trend to go on further. So, if your boy Ali A, for example, stopped uploading Fortnite-related videos with all his mates, the rest will follow and the overall popularity of Fortnite would decrease. I think it's props <laughs> to a lot of streamers because it really is a difficult thing to do to it's entertain an art form, and play. It really is. Yeah, I don't even talk to my wife while I'm playing. <laughs> So going into this, do you guys have any specific strategies, especially you, since I know you've been practicing? Yeah, um, hide. Okay, that's always um, a <laughs> Not strategy. die. That's also- Because if I don't die, then I win, you know? Regarding the trends dying, that's an obvious given. The human race have a terrible attention span. Last year we were saying the world was overrun with fidget spinners, and now it's a video game. 2016, Pokemon Go. 2015, Exploding Swagways. 2014, The Ice Bucket Challenge. 2013, GTA 5. It just goes on and on. If you leave this video still not knowing when Fortnite will die, then I've done my job. You're not supposed to know. Let's be real here, you can't put an expiry date on a game. It all depends on how much longer Epic can continue to support their brand, and how much longer people can fly out of a bus, grab some guns, build a wall and repeat, and maybe run around in a shopping cart until they get bored and want something else to do. As of right now, I don't see a decline in interest, especially with a trailer with a kick-ass soundtrack like this. If you can't stand the word Fortnite right now, don't worry, you're not alone. Just just hold on for a little longer, you'll make it. And for those who are still loving Fortnite, good for you. Enjoy it while it lasts. So the next time you get clickbaited into watching a really depressing video essay on why Fortnite is dying, don't forget that it's probably not for the reasons that they're complaining about. Just remember that one YouTuber can't predict the exact death of a game. They can give you cheap examples on why it may be a bad game or why they don't like it, but their forced personal opinion isn't fact. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know when you think Fortnite will start to die down in the comment section below and maybe give the like button a tickle. If you enjoyed content like this, feel free to subscribe for more, and thank you to my monthly Patreons for your support. And Fortnite's no different when it comes to trending than the good old fidgets. <laughs>